Hey, what is good everyone? Um, I'm Martin and I'm here after a whole... Ooh, that was my watch charger. I'm here after a whole month of no uploads, 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 I don't know, you know the word. Um, because I started school and um, all the time I had back then to record videos and edit and work on music and stream and everything just simply went away and I don't have that much time anymore. And the problem with that is that um, I actually was really committed to this YouTube channel. I'm still, I, I still am. Um, but it's like I just couldn't keep up with the rhythm anymore. And like I'm in my sophomore year, if that makes sense. Uh, it's like my, the year before the last year of high school. Uh, I think it would be the sophomore in the US. I'm 16 turning 17, if that gives you any information. I, I don't use the system you guys use. Um, but... Uh, like, I just couldn't keep up with the uploads, and, like, I, I didn't want to have a patron up there with people paying me monthly. When I wasn't providing as much as I wanted, I just simply didn't feel okay doing it. Because, like, I'm taking your money, and I'm providing a service that I, I wouldn't qualify as, like, worth my money, simply. So, I closed my Patreon. Um, if you were one of my patrons, I posted this on my Patreon. Uh, but if you were one of my patrons and you want access to the um, FLPs, email me. My email is in the description. Email me and I'll send the stuff to you. Um, because I don't know if everyone had enough time to download the stuff. So just email me and I'll send it to you. No problem. Um, second, I, I'm actually going to be like um, debunking. Not debunking. I don't think that's the right word. I'm going over some beats I made for Dolly. They asked specifically for like more ambient beats. They said that they could like uh, go on any type of beat, but um, they specifically like said, you know, ambient is good. So I made some ambient. Um, as you may have seen, I switched to Ableton and I have some words on that too. Shout out to my guy, Hi Starkey. Like, thank you so much, man. I went on BC with, BC with him and he just like explained the basics of Ableton to me. like in 30 minutes and it was so simple and he helped so much so it's like props to him because he actually taught me the very basic of Ableton and then I should switch from Ableton like I, I switched to Ableton if you're wondering why did he move to Ableton when I was using a phone you know like I actually have a full license of FL Studio like I have a all plugins edition version of uh, FL Studio and like why did I change it like why why did I why and the answer is I just find the workflow of Ableton more uh, suitable for my style of work and production, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. That's the reason. So I have both my live and my FL Studio open here. So I'll explain everything, both for Ableton and FL Studio. There's things that are just like common sense on how to do, but I'll still explain them a little bit over. And I have right now, it's uh, 3.53. No, I don't want to lock my phone. It should turn off, but it's 3.53 right now. And I have to be in piano lessons at five. So I may stop recording this and then start again. I like making these videos feel a little bit personal. So all these moments where I talk about my life and shit, I, I, I didn't cut them, I just leave them here. Um, because I want this to feel a little bit personal, like I'm just giving you like a, like some sort of a class or something. And I just like the personal vibe of my videos. Something else, I have been talking for 4 minutes and I'm yet not explaining anything, is that being that I won't be uploading, I will be uploading less. I want to make my videos actual classes and courses, you know, I want the stuff that I'm making here on my computer be really helpful and significant for someone's music career you know i want to make like a course that someone can just go and watch and say like you know i i learned how to do this from this video not just making type b tutorials i i want to make actual classes for people and that's my aim and that's my goal so the first thing i'm gonna be showing is the beats the ambient beats i made for dolly um there's stuff that i made didn't like not thinking that i'm going to send this to dolly but i still made it while making the pack and i still sent it so yeah, let's begin. I'm gonna go over the first beat right here, uh, which is this one. I had my, uh, this like the third time I recorded this video, um, or fourth, like not, not the whole video, I just got here and like the four times. I hope this is the last one. 
Um, so yeah, let's just start. I'm gonna start with the drums. So something for Apple users and Ableton users, if you're switching from Apple, Apple Studio to Ableton and vice versa, if you go on Apple Studio and you want to have like the triplets, you know, in your hi-hat, you can do something like that and then like something like this, you know? Oh my God, I'm, I'm doing such a mess here. And then I'm just gonna put like a random hi-hat iPhones, um, you know? Like, uh, you just go into the magnet here in one third step. So then you have the triplets like this. You know, that's how it works on Apple Studio. On Ableton, you don't really have that. You have a grid, you have like one third, like one, three, two, I don't know how to say it, sorry. One sixteenth, one eighth, one four, one, one half, uh, one bar. Um, but you don't really have one third. So to have one third, you just need to turn on the triplet grid. And that's how I made my hi-hats. Um, they're pretty, pretty simple. And on this kind of ambient beat, your focus needs to be not only on having a good atmosphere and soundscape, you need to be really smart with your sound selection, but you also need to take into account the bounce of the drums. Don't overload your drums. Sometimes it sounds good, but sometimes it's better to keep it simple. So this is my hi-hat uh, right here. The hi-hat preset for this was made by High Starkey. Um, I don't know if I can actually show this. Um, so I think I will not do it because, you know, uh, it's from Starkey's private kit. So like the hi-hat preset, so I, I, it wouldn't be really good manners to just show the preset for his hi-hat he made. Um, so basically the preset is like pretty much delay and some sort of gross beat that's like repeating. It's not too complex. You can just hear it and figure it out. And then we have one snare, which is making some noise right here. And it's not too complex, it's not like that. So an FL Studio that would be located here. That's where the snare would be located. Um, just so you understand it, because at first when you come to Ableton, like the piano roll doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to be explaining some stuff like that. We have two claps, actually, and something I like about this software is that I can select both claps and have them on one piano roll, so I'll just show it. It's two different symbols, but that doesn't matter, it's just like two different clap sounds. And it sounds like that, hold on, like um, this. It's That's the first clap. And that's the second clap. They're pretty similar, but one is higher pitched than the other one, and that's why I just added both. That's some little bounce in the clap, like, you know, you could do that sound with like a snare or you could also just like go and just add your clap as a snare, you know? It's all, per it's all percussive elements in the end, so it's pretty much like, it doesn't matter. Um, here I have this metronome, actually, I have a metronome, which is this perk that you can find on like almost every single Benji Cole kit or like any kit that has like perks. You can just go and find this metronome sounding perk. And that's what I did. If you position when the metronome, like the metronome on Ableton sounds like this. But basically what it does is it does this. It's, it does D sharp, D sharp, D sharp, D, D, no, sorry. D sharp, C, 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 and then it repeats. So you can just recreate the same like pitch on the metronome if you have the same exact sound like I had here. And then we have this one sound that I don't know what it is. Oh, it's another snare. Um, and it sounds like this. It's like a, like a snare that like uh, makes company to the other drums. Not too complex, not, not too hard. Um, but you understand how it sounds. And then we have this final uh, 808 right here. It's a Spence 808, um, nothing too crazy. And it starts here, um, and it sounds a little bit like this. I have to unmute it. And I have this preset called, like, no, not this preset, this option called One Shot on Ableton. That's pretty much the same as, you know, if I come here, you see how the 808 cuts there, and it stops sounding, even though the, the sound didn't finish, like here. You look at that wave, look, look at it. 
it doesn't finish yet, but it still cuts. Um, so to achieve that in FL Studio, you come to your sampler, you come to the envelope, you come to volume, you turn the attack all the way down, the hold all the way up, decay, sustain, and release all the way down. And if I if this wasn't like a if this was like a an 808, you know, it, it's the same as here. Uh, it's just to cover that up. Um, and then I basically added this other preset from um, my boy Starkey. It's pretty much just a compressor to make my 808 louder. Um, you, you can have that, I assume. I'm sorry, Starkey, if I'm like <laughs> showing your preset without asking you. Um, yeah, that's just a compressor. But this thing that right here called Redux, I added it myself. Um, this is how the spin it would sound without it. And this is how it, it would sound with it. So it's just a beat reducer, um, which it does. It's, it's just like literally uh, reduces the beat rate on your sample to make it sound a little bit more trashy. Uh, and that's it. It just adds this beep to the 808. Um, that's it for the drums. We have some like dicks here and there and blah, blah, blah. And then we have our melody, which is, I actually use um, uh, a preset from Starkey. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I can show that either. Um, and the melody is pretty simple. It's an E Dorian. I, I was just in the FLC, FLC studio. Oh my God. I was just in the piano, like, you know, what skill can I go for? And I was like, E Dorian, whatever. Um, and it sounds like this. Nothing too crazy, it's just a pattern omnisphere. Um, yeah, it's the pad Kaimini Crying Times from the Hardware Library patch. And then we have this second instance and the third instance of omnisphere, which is literally the same patch, just in this case one octave higher than this one, and in this case three octaves higher. So you can just listen to it and hear it by yourself. And we have on the master, you know, you can hear some little silences on the whole beat, like right here. I, I don't know where it is. Yeah, like here. You know, uh, to achieve that, you can go into the master, you come in here um, and you turn on the like automation thingy right here on the rack. And then you just come to track volume and like turn it down where you want it to turn down and you have like that little automation. So I'm gonna play the beat one last time so I can like then put the timestamp on the description like result one and it's this beat. So I hope it was successful at showing the beat. It's nothing too crazy. It's just a pad playing a melody that repeats itself and some bouncy drums and that's it. That This is I think the least of the interesting beats I made. Tonto. Tonto. so well right there that's it for that beat so let's go to the second one which is I'm gonna show this one because I really like this one so right here I used some of Ableton's like native tools and I actually had a really fun time making this beat um, I really liked it I would maybe call this be like generative piano music and I'll explain that later um, so I have this drums nothing too crazy I have this melody it sounds like this, look. And that intro is very interesting, I'll go over it in a minute. I was talking about it. 
and then it comes this shimmered pad of piano. And now, let me explain the introduction, which sounds like very weird, you know, very dark, like this. It starts very like, whoa. Um, basically, that's an effect I found yesterday called Brain Delay. I don't, I, I'm gonna be fully honest, I have no clue what this does, no clue. It seems to be a delay where you can play with the pitch, make random pitches, and then also play with the frequency of your sound. So I can go in here and like, I don't know, like, and that's a delay, oh, it's actually like a granulator delay. So then you have like, like random frequency, I don't know how it works to be honest. I just came in here turn up the frequency up to 144 hertz because it's just like that number and then i made an intro out of it because i was like this sounds awesome like i was looking for some sort of like granulator effect so like instead of playing with the like gain i was like let me just add some granulator thing and like make some cool effects and i by mistake made this intro so i automated the dry effect and the dry effect for people who wouldn't really know it's uh in fl studio you have this knob right here which is the mix level the dry is the same thing dry wet it's the same thing dry 100 no wet 100 percent is that the effect is to the 100 percent of it and dry to the zero it's that the the effect it's, it's soft like the track is dry you know because it's not wet uh dry and wet is a term used in reverb mainly because like dry would be without reverb and wet would be with a lot of reverb so i think you can follow my point here we have the same glue compressor and limiter on the master thing that's a preset from high star key i'm sorry i'm showing all your presets bro like I'm, I'm sorry if you want me to delete this video I'll, I'll just delete it i think i'm being very responsible here showing yourself i'm sorry um we have this first omnisphere pad with this preset i won't show because the the, the mix preset was made by high star key again um, but you can figure it out on your own. It's reverb, portal, and some, some half time to make my melody slower. Um, Shaper Box is a really good plugin. It's like Grosvite for people who come from FL Studio. If you come from FL Studio and you use Grosvite a lot like I did, you will miss it so much. And Shaper Box is pretty similar. It's like Effect Tricks, if that makes, like, if that brings you a bell. And then you use Portal, which is one of my favorite BSTs. Something that I can show though, it's the preset in Omnisphere, which is, um, let's wait for this load. It's pad broken. I don't really know from which bank. I, I, I just found that preset on my thing. Um, so then we have the drums. Like I'm gonna later show the, the piano. It's a regular clap, like the one I showed earlier before. Hold on. Nothing too crazy, nothing too wow. All the drums in here, like all the drum sounds are by high star key. Um, yeah. This is my hi-hat. It's nothing too crazy, it's in triplets again. You can listen to it and copy it. I think it would be pretty easy to recreate. The notes that you can hear but not see, it's because again of the preset with shaper box and delay again. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much delay with gross beat on repeater and the hi-hats right here. We have one snare that makes like a little company to, to the rest of the drums, you know? I just like to think of my percussive elements then each other like making company to each other. That's like a cute thought, I guess. Um, we have the snare right here. Uh, it sounds pretty good. Nothing too crazy. It does some triplets here and like the velocity goes up and down. You know, it's, it sounds pretty cool. I think it's like a cool effect, like like a slap on your face, you know. Uh, we have a ha open hat that I turned off because it was like too on your face. We have one perk right here, uh, one perk set. No, uh, no perk set. Don't do drugs, kids. That that's bad for your health, I guess. I, I don't even know. Um, this is my perk.
If the grid system does make no sense to you, I'll explain it right here. So this is my FL Studio. Um, the perk would be hmm, right uh, here. On the first time and then it would be right here if I had to guess so let's see if it's the same it is the same so the perk preset like the perk piano roll would look a little bit like this um so yeah that's pretty much it for the drums um, I have this 808 right here, which sounds a little bit like this. Nothing too crazy, it's this 808 by... I think it's Pro Wi-Fi from his kit, but I'm not sure to be honest. I'm not gonna look right now. Um, so then I have this uh, whole, like... Mixer by Hi Sturkey again. I cannot show. I'm sorry. I used uh, his preset slot, and I didn't want to just like go and change my 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 FLP or like ALP to like pretend I didn't use his presets. Like all props to him. He made those amazing racks. I'm just gonna explain what they do without showing them, so it's not like literally showing out his stuff. So I use Saturator, which is like. You have two things that are usually missed, uh, understood. And the first one is saturation, and the second one is distortion. Distortion is when something clips, and let me just explain it. Like, you can have something clipping, like I'm gonna make this bird clip, you know? And if you look at it, that's clipping. But you can make something saturate. And for that, I'm gonna use um, something like, I don't know. I think they have a BSD from FabFilter that does that. I'm not really sure. Um, I can just use Blood Overdrive. Not like that, never mind. Um, I don't have a saturator here, I don't think. Uh, Fab Filter, and that's um, Pro, 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 Pro. Saturn T, there we go. This is a saturator. But something that you need to understand is that saturation does not necessarily mean um, distortion. So that's our clean sound. Uh, I'm just gonna use a preset, like, not faster, master, you know. Um, I don't know, like, maybe... Um, like, what saturation can do, that's not really saturation, I'm sorry, I, I can't really explain it. What it does is it adds harmonics to the sound, and it makes it makes um, harmonics basically pop up on your sound and it like makes your sound more rich sometimes sometimes you do not need more volume or anything you just need some saturation to add some harmonics to your sound um, so that's what we have on the 808 and then I'm pretty sure we have Redux again yes we do have Redux again um, I'm pretty much using Redux on all my 808s it adds that BP sound you can hear here know um, it just adds that noise so we have already explained the omnisphere but something that I can show though it's the contact um, so we have this piano right here it's some simple chords as you can see this is just chords that are playing like that sort of for arpeggio um, and it's these chords you can stop the video copy them the scale is a sharp minor or b flat minor um, but something a little interesting here is if you come to the contact i'm not using a piano bank i am using let me close this all of four arnold stratus um, basically for the ones that don't know what that is it's this preset by um this bank by Spitfire Audio that it's basically like this uh, very big composer I think it's from Islandia I, I don't want to uh, be wrong on that so I will not put my hand over the fire for that but he's this really good composer I recommend you check him out um, and he has this piano bank 
and it's basically this ARP. I use the preset Matrix looped rhythms and the preset Swarms at the same time, and it sounds like that. It's that ARP. And I basically, like, it just plays for you, pretty much. It doesn't play really a melody, it just plays this, like... You can see the ear. It sounds really good. I don't know how it's called, but it sounds good, like, the way it's playing. So I copied that three times. Well, no, two times. I have the original one, the second one, and the third one. For the second one, I went here, and I added Valhalla Shimer on the big, like, big reverse preset and turn the mix all the way up. And I added some Bahala Benage, Benage Burf on the preset Ambience and play with the Decay if I'm wrong. And it sounds like this. It's just like this very big pad. Um, yeah. It sounds pretty chill. And then we have this other contact pad which I'm gonna go over, and it's this one, look. Instead of Shimmer, we have... Because something that may be confusing for people from FL is that you basically, what you have from right, what you have from left to... Okay, what you have from left to right... No, oh my god, I'm seeing myself there. And I see myself inverted, like this is my right hand. So, what you see from left to right is what you see from up to down on Apple Studio. So if I have something on this LUT one, it will be here on Ableton, okay? I may should have explained that earlier before, but I did not. Um, so basically I have some vintage birth, same preset, ambience, same settings, exact same. And then I went to Valhalla Supermassive, really recommended plugin. And I used the preset um, Benson Arizona from Reverb C Massive. And it sounds like that. And that's what gives it that super huge ambient sound. You know, it sounds like this. Like. Feels like free diving. I have never free dived in my entire life. I hope I can do someday, but I picture it sounds like that. You know, like just going, just picture yourself swimming on a suit inside of a cave. You know, going into the depths. I guess this is what that would sound like. You know, pretty. Impotence. Um So yeah, that's it for the th second beat. I hope I could explain it easier or better because I actually don't know how to explain stuff in Ableton. So I, I hope you, you're being able to follow me. I'm gonna go pick up my coffee because I made myself some coffee like 20 minutes ago and I forgot to bring it here. So I'm just gonna pause this and be back in like not much. Hey, guess who's back here with another FOP? Oh my god, I keep saying FOP, it's ALPs. Guess who's back here with another project with some coffee on a Rick and Morty cup my ex-girlfriend gifted me. I'm ready to keep recording, that's me. Um, okay, this is a pretty much simpler beat, but it's more interesting on the making. So I'm really excited to show this. We have this clap, I'm gonna go with the drums first, I'm gonna show how the beat sounds and then go over it. So it sounds like this. Dun, dun. Let me crank this. Let's just explain this. For the melody, this is a huge uh, thingy. So it all starts here. I'm gonna turn off every single effect I have and explain it. Um, it starts here. This is actually the third beat I made on Ableton and it starts here. Um, so basically, I have this serum preset that sounds a little bit like this. I made this preset myself. So it's the, the, my melody sounds like this. As you can hear, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit, more than a little bit, micro tune, micro tune. It's not on purpose. I'll explain why that is later. So basically, my melody looks like this. I'm sorry, Dolly, if you have to make vocals over this and it's really hard to tune your auto tune, 
Now you know why that is, because this is kind of micro-tuned, weirdly tuned. I'm sorry. Um, so this is my melody, you can stop and copy it. I'm not gonna go over the whole melody, how I made it, because I don't know. I just press a scale on my Ableton, and then just start clicking notes that sound good, to be honest. And I think that's the process for every single musician that doesn't know much about music theory. I was checking my watch because I have piano lessons in 40 minutes and I have to bike there 20 minutes, so I have 20 minutes left. Um, so we are starting here, and this is the original sound, literally. Something that played big role on the making of this preset is the velocity on the notes. Um, yeah, so that's something I wanted to know, like say to you. Um, Playing with velocity on Ableton is kind of an annoying task because you have to select the note or like select a, a bunch of them and then uh, shift and use your your mouse. Um, and it's kind of annoying from time to time because in Apple it's like easier and cuter and you can just randomize it. And here you can't, so you have to do it by hand or just play with a keyboard. I have one keyboard here, one keyboard here. This is like a MIDI and this is a synth and my actual piano is two rums apart. Um, but yeah, I have like a USB like key, like piano keyboard, like one of those Casio keyboards, if that makes sense. Um, so you may be wondering, how do you go from white noise to a like pad? So I came in here to the filter, added uh, band 24. This is a band pass filter and that's very important because what that will do, it will block a band pass filter. Basically, it lets the band like, okay, you have three different kinds of filters, very oval. You have a low pass, a high pass, and a band pass. The low pass only lets low frequencies pass, the high pass only lets high frequencies pass, and the band pass only lets frequencies from the mid-range pass. So I came in here to the cutoff and set it to 440 hertz, and then I turned on key tracking. So what that does is that every time my, like my, my I press an out, the cutoff will move, as you can see right there, uh, right there on the little graph here. Ooh, I could actually sample that and make something with this noise, but whatever. So I, I, I turn the rest, you know, if you just add this filter cutoff like to 440 hertz, and then you just leave it like that, nothing will happen. So you need to turn the resonance all the way up, and now it's when you'll hear noise. So I also turned the drive a little bit up, so it sounds like more boosted. Um, and that's it for the noise. You need to turn on the N key right here on Ableton, like on Serum, to have uh, your filter affecting your noise section right here. Remember that. You can use any sort of noise. I use the ARP thing because it sounded good, but you can use any of these and it will still sound good. On effects, I have nothing, so let's go to the mixer track. I have first on delay, my favorite delay plugin all time, Timeless 3. I came here to the half notes and turned it down to 50%. So basically what that means is that you have a note. Let's say we have 140, no. Let's say we have this tempo, you know? If we put the delay to half a note, uh, it would sound like this. No. Um, no. Okay, I cannot explain it. I'm sorry. I tried to explain something I can't. You basically turn it all the <laughs> all the way down to 50%, and it will sound like this. And you turn the feedback a lot up so it sounds like like the, the the delay is higher in volume you know that's like that's why you turn the feedback up something that i would really advise you to do is uh let's let's just use the default preset you come here half note all the way down and you take this few options out you take instability out docking out and wobble out because uh these three options what they do is that they randomize the pitch of the delay a little bit and sometimes that sounds odd. So just turn it down and then the feedback goes up and it looks like that and that's your delay. We have Poor All, my favorite BST right here. 
on the pad bouncer preset from this bank called Portal 2021. I have no clue from where that is. I got it from Discord. I have Valhalla Shimmer on the preset Black Hole, you can see right there. I think I changed the pitch mode to Duo Re Reverse and the Reverse mode to Big Stereo, but that's it. We have Tansuth too. This is a BST that my guy Hysark recommended me. And what it does, it soothes sounds. It makes them sound more comfortable to the ear. Um, she's taking out rough of frequencies and I just turn the depth up and put it in the soft preset. And that's it for the melody. We also have a compressor to make it like, oh, the compressor. So what I did is that I have this snare that you cannot hear, but it's still there uh, doing stuff. So let, let's see if you can hear what it does. I have both my snare and my serum on. So every time that sound sounds, it turns the volume of my melody off. And I I didn't want to automate my whole melody, like, okay, it goes, like, the sound goes down here and here here. So I made this snare pattern. And then I added snares when I wanted my sound to go down. And then I went to my snare channel and I added three limit turns turning the volume all the my bad I'm sorry turning the gain all the way down so basically I have a mute snare a snare that you cannot see but for the mixer it's still there you have that snare but that snare is just not making noise okay you can add all the snares you want and basically what I did is controlling the gain and the volume of my melody through a sound why? Because it's easier than just going in here and automating the budget. Like, well, I did this to turn the volume of my melody up and down. And it's easier than just like going over and over again, like, like turning it up and down. Um, so I came in here and added a compressor, turned on the sidechain option, added the audio from the channel I wanted, which is the snare, and I added it in pre-effects. So, all the... The limiters I added turning down my sound are not making any effect. And then gain zero, mix 100%. I added some EQ, took the sum of the low end out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. Um, I have my snares here. I'm going to go a little bit over the drums to not make this video super, super long and not and, and not make it really boring. So basically, that's the, the perk. You can hear it there. This is a texture I got from... Um, Margo Proxy drum kit. You should definitely check Margo Proxy. Amazing ambient producer. Go to it. Check them out. Um, they have a free kit, which I got the texture from. So we have this hi-hat right here. It's nothing too crazy. It's making some like cool bouncy pattern that sounds like this. Nothing too crazy. We have a clap right here. Normal clap, you know. We have one 808 that does the same that the one on, I think the second beat I showed this does of like cutting the, if you go on FL Studio and you come in here and you do the envelope thing, it's the same as coming onto Ableton and doing the one shot thing right here there. Like it's nothing too crazy. So basically what I, I did was like cutting my 808 to give it some spacing, like it cuts on purpose. And I added some Redux, again, I really love that BSD or that plugin, I guess, or audio effect as they are called on Ableton. So that's it for the beat. It's super simple, but really effective. I really like how this sounds, you know? Dun, dun. Awesome. And then we have the last beat, which is called All Alone. This is the second beat I actually made on Ableton. And I was like figuring out how they do these stuff. Like, 
why? And that's why there's only three sounds on the on the beat because it's very simple. I was just starting. So we have a little bit to touch here. So we got these three textures that are again from Margo Proxy Cut. Um, so I'm gonna go over the drums first. It's nothing too crazy, I'm gonna show them together. It's again a hi-hat, a clap, and an 808 that, you know, it's just like regular hi-hat I would make. <laughs> to get this effect on the hi-hat, like that effect, you need to use phaser. So I added like five phasers and then what I did was like um, automating them on the start to like they all go up and down. So basically the phaser is what makes my, my hi-hat sound like this at the start. I think it's a cool automation. But that's how my, my hi-hat sounds. Regular clap as always and cool little 808. And now we just have the melody, which is this piano right here. I really like this melody, it's so nice. Um, so basically I have Panelist Tree, which is a delay on my piano, as always, 50%, half a note. This is my regular like uh, delay preset, and the feedback is in 23.8%. I just like drag this with the mouse, it's nothing too calculated. We have Valhalla Shimer on Black Hole, Big Stereos, again. We have some EQ to take the rough note, like the rough, 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 rough uh, frequencies of your melody or the low one that you don't really want. And we have Shaper Box on the multi picture preset. And the piano basically is, oh, the piano is old piano from Contact from, I think it's Westwood Instruments. I, I think that is. It's the most realistic, untuned kind of piano I could find and it gives some really melancholic vibes. Sounds pretty good. So I came here, duplicated my melody, and then I froze my melody. What freeze, freezing does, it like it renders the melody, but you can still see it as a MIDI. And then you have an option called flatten track. And I flatten my track. You can freeze and then, okay, it's gonna take a long time because I'm recording. You can flatten your track. And basically what it does is like consolidating on FL Studio. If I come in here and I, right click consolidate track it will do the exact same thing as freezing and then flattening um so then i came here and i reversed my melody using you can come in here and you can reverse your clip pressing the r and it's the re reverse piano and it also gives like a really patty sound that's also very melancholic and i really like and i just use it redux that's it and finally, fine, no, last but not least, we have one last piano melody that sounds a little bit like this. It's on triplets. And then we have Timeless Tree, regular piece that I always use. Valhalla Shimer and some EQ. And on this part, I took the same melody, I duplicated it and then took it one octave down. But it's the same melody, I just layered it with, with this one. It's playing octaves, actually. And that's it for this beat. And for all the beats. I send only four beats. And I know it's a really long video, this is 45 minutes, and it's really long, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could learn something, maybe learn something about the, my, the, my workflow in Ableton and how Ableton works. And maybe you want to switch to Ableton and this video gave you enough like inspiration to do it or anything. I don't know, I hope you enjoy it. 
um, yeah, I actually want to up, like, raise the quality of my videos, and I'm gonna be sacrificing uploading so much for more quality. So my objective this time, I'm gonna try to do it, is two videos per month, at least 30 minutes long, showing and explaining stuff. And yeah, I hope this new version of my journey is interesting to you all. And yeah, feel free to follow me on SoundCloud. It's at, uh, at MartinLave. My Instagram is um, Instagram.com slash Martin.Lave. And yeah, that's it. Those are my socials pretty much. Feel free to follow me there. I'm one follower away from 900. And if you want to buy beats, I have some beats at my track train. It's tracktrain.com slash M. Um, yeah, everything will be linked down in the description. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to be today. Oh, I hope to be seeing you in the next video. Peace out and I don't know, go do something fun. Like making some beats.